in this game we're going to see the approach that white could undertake um, a particular approach against um, black playing the Grunfield opening now I would say this is not um, our going to be our main approach to black's Grunfield opening but again move order is very important as usual in this in in, in our repertoire and um, the Grunfield is a very popular opening and obviously after d4 the Grunfield continues c4, g6, knight, c3, d5. And this is very popular at numerous levels. Um, of course, we, we don't have our pawn on d4 against Grunfield, which gives us some added um, advantages. The way we reach the Grunfield is going to be with c4, obviously. And after c4, black plays knight to f6. We go knight to c3. And here, black either plays d5 on this move, or he plays g6 first, and then d5, um, reaching the Grimfield kind of idea. Now, before we move on to a game of Karpovs, which happened after g6 and um, g3, d5, which um, is something we need to cover because this is uh, our system. Um, I mean, this is why we all start with g3, because... Uh, because it fits in perfectly with our move order. Before we move on to this, we are going to have a look at black playing d5 and move 2. Also trying to reach a Grimfield position, but just to move, order, move earlier. And now, you can continue as we're going to have a look at in the next game, simply by taking on d5 and playing g3. So this game is a bit of a bonus for you, because I think it contains a very dangerous setup against this maybe slightly premature d5 move from black. Um, if you want to just keep things simple, then you can skip this game, move on to the next game of Karpovs, where Karpov just plays G3. And this is a universal system that we can play against an early D5 move from black um, in this Grimfield structure. Remember, as long as he can't take with a pawn on D5. Um, this is a point worth, rem worth remembering. If for whatever reason black goes E6 and tries to go D5, then the position totally changes. But, you know, it's move order tricks again. And if you go through the DVD, it will become clear to you. So after knight to c3, my opponent played d5. Maybe he was fearful that if he went g6, I would stop him playing d5 with e4. Uh, but this is out of our repertoire. We're not going for this setup. But maybe this is my opponent's worry. But after d5, I now took on d5. Knight takes d5. And instead of playing g3, which we're going to look at next... I developed my other knight with a particular idea in mind. And this is very became very popular after some of the wins by Topolov. My idea was, well, my opponent is logically going to go g6 here, reaching a Grunfield kind of position, hoping I'm going to go d4. Now, we're going to avoid d4 for a little bit because this would transpose back into mainline Grunfield. Hundreds of DVDs on that. I don't know about hundreds, but there's, there's a number of, a lot of work on it. Instead, queen c2 is my idea. And this is a very interesting little move. And one of the main points behind it is that we want to go e4. And after a capture on c3, we want to take our d-pawn and avoid the exchange of queens. So our main intention with this is to play the move e4. And it can lead to a very nice attacking position. I had a game against Simon Knott from the Hastings Masters Congress 2011. And after Queen to C2, that game continued Bishop to G7. Obviously, the logical continuation. So now, E4 is a move to play. And this was my intention. Now, Knight to B4 is a move that is rather theoretical. But here, we can go Queen to A4 check. And... Black has a decision to make. He has to move one of his knights to c6. If he moves his knight on even knight to c6, we're going d4. And this is advantage to white here. Uh, and this this is a nice position for white here. So my opponent didn't like the look of that. This um, Because now it's not like a Grunfield. Because in a normal, normal Grunfield, black always has the break c5. You can no longer play this. So my opponent now moved the knight back to b6 which looks perfectly normal, but he quickly got in a bad position. Now I played d4. And this is certainly not a normal Grimfield now, because in a normal Grimfield, 
black would have already taken on c3. In this position, I've gained a number of tempos on normal Grim Grimfield. My queen is quite good on c2. I have a strong center, and this is just a very promising position for white. Let's just see. Castle's kingside, simple development. Bishop to e3, and now bishop to g4 was tried, but knight to e5, a very strong reply. My opponent gave up his very strong bishop. I recaptured, knight to c6, and I pushed his pieces back, h3. Bishop e6, rook d1, queen c8, and bishop e2. I have a big advantage here, and um, I went on to, to win this game. A big advantage, I'm preparing to castle and go f4, f5. His king is lacking protection because he's lost his main defensive piece, the bishop, on g7. So I thought I'd just include this very short clip on an interesting possibility, an interesting way to play if black plays d5 quick. Now, you can go g3 here, but another idea is to go knight to f3 and queen c2. The intention of going e4 and then d4, reaching a unique groom field which I believe favours white. So, another possibility for you there. If you want to keep things simple, now we're going to move on to Karpov. A Karpov game, I was going to call it the Karpov plan, but um, a simple way for white to play, which should give white an advantage as well.